Hello electric vehicle enthusiasts, Mark here with another installment of My EV Life. If you're watching this channel, you are likely either a Rivian, Tesla, solar panel, or house battery. Owner, soon to be owner, or enthusiast, because those are the things that I own and those are the things that I like to talk about. Now I got the idea for today's video after getting an alert on my phone last night. It came through at 9.05 p.m. It was a notification from my Rivian app telling me that my Rivian R1T truck here had a new update with some new features which always gets me excited. And I thought, well, that might make for an interesting, short, simple video I could share out to my audience. I could share one, what does that over the air update process look like? And two, what features came out? Now today is Thursday, October 6th. This update came out last night, Wednesday, October 5th at 9.05 PM. At least that's when it came out for me. Rivian and Tesla, they do like to stage their updates and users can get those updates at different days and times. The update is labeled 2022.35.3, all right, and that's what we're going to cover. Now as soon as it came in last night, of course, I installed it, I saw some of the features and they got me really excited because these are things I've been waiting for. I think they're things that you're going to find interesting. So enough about this intro, let's get into the truck and I can show you everything that came to me last night. But let's first start with how that install process went down. No, I'm not at the beach. But since I'll be showing you screen grabs from my phone and the video will be vertical, I needed a good Rivian truck image as a backdrop today. So here's the alert I received last night. Your vehicle is ready for an update. Estimate is 80 minutes to install. And of course, I tap into that and I see this in the Rivian app. And at the top, you see vehicle software update available, which I tap. And it tells me the version I'm getting, 2022.35.3. And it reminds me of a couple important things when doing over the air software updates, like you must be parked, not driving, can't have a super low battery, so range above 35 miles, must not be fast charging at the time, and don't have your pets in the car relying on the climate control because it can go off. But wait, have I even covered what OTA updates are, over-the-air updates? It's real simple. When the EV manufacturer has new features, fixes, or updates to send your truck or your car, the vehicle takes over and downloads and installs the update for you. But you don't need to be at your house, you don't need Wi-Fi, because this is done over the air, given the vehicle has its own mobile phone connection. And this is true of both Tesla and Rivian, with Tesla being the pioneers of this technology. So I'm about to hit the Update Now button, and there's a few other things I can read. Mainly it's reminding you that since the vehicle will be shutting down at moments during the install process, doors and latches may not be accessible. So get your stuff out of the front and the storage areas now. So now I'm pressing the update now button and it's telling me the estimated time to install this update will be about 80 minutes. It asks me, are you sure? And I say, yes, I'm sure. And the install begins. Now I could have initiated this all from the vehicle, but I used the phone instead. So let's go out there now and I'll show you what you see in the vehicle after I press the start button. This is about three minutes later and notice the vehicle is counting down. This is allowing me time to get anything out that I may not have gotten out of the storage areas before the process begins. Now you can fast forward this just by hitting the start button, but I wanted to let the time run down for you. And then you see when it hits zero, the actual install does begin. And during the install, you can watch your phone app. It'll give you an update here as to how far along it is. Each time you leave and come back to the app, here's what you see on the home screen. And now we wait. Let me show you a few things you might be curious about while the truck is going through the install. What does it look like from the outside? Well, nothing. No lights are blinking. It's just black and quiet. Can you still open the doors? Well, yes, I did test that for you. And you'll see here that as I approach, it recognizes me like it normally does with my phone in my pocket and it unlocks the doors for me. So that did work. But this is dependent on when you walk up. There are times it may not respond during that hour of install. And if you do want to check in on the vehicle during the install, this is what you'll see on the control panel. I also want to make sure the vehicle locked itself as I walked away, which it normally does. And you can see here I'm walking further and further away. And of course, you've got to walk just far enough away so the vehicle recognizes that you left, which happens here. It locked itself. So that feature still works. And lo and behold, it's done. You get the happy notification on your phone. I got it at 1018. I started it at 915. It took one hour and three minutes. And you don't see a lot in the app when the install is done. That's going to be more in the vehicle. But you can go to the about section. You can go to the software settings and you can go ahead and confirm that you have the new version. Now in the vehicle, this is where the fun begins. because This is where you get to see what's new. 
and you press that button and it's going to bring you to the release notes for this software update. It's going to kind of walk you through what you just got. Now I did have a little bump here. I think I was trying to read the release notes too soon after it was installed. I did get this message that I do have to come back later and I waited a few minutes and they did come up. So that was last night. Now let's fast forward to today and I'm going to go in the vehicle. I'm going to walk you through the features that were just released last night. Now let me just show you where this is in case you leave and want to come back. Let's say you go somewhere else on the screen. You want to get back to those notes. You may be tempted to go to the owner's guide, but that's actually not where you're going to find the release notes. You want to go to settings, make sure you're on vehicle over here, updates, and that's where we are here on the updates. All right, let's start with the remote cabin preconditioning temperature adjustment. Up until now, Tesla had a huge advantage. My Model Y, I could adjust a lot of the climate settings. I could turn on the, the seat heaters and all these other things, defrost uh, from the app remotely. Rivian, up until last night, all you could do was turn on the climate control or turn it off and no other settings, really. With this new update, you can now adjust the temperature remotely. And so this is a big deal for me. I'm really happy to see this one. I would give this tied for first place in the new features. So let me do a cutaway here, and I'll show you what that looks like in the app. All right, so we go into the app here, and we're going to want to pull up the bottom a little bit, and you see the cabin climate area there. I turn it on. And now look, I can go up and down with temperature. I can move it up to 70 degrees, pick my temperature. And when I come out of that and back to the app home screen, look, it shows you 64 degrees climate running, temperature is set to 70. That's beautiful, love it. The rear seat accessory setting, uh, that allows you to turn off the alerts uh, or the alarms when it senses something behind your vehicle. When you have an accessory back there, like maybe a bike rack that goes into your trailer hitch, which I've actually done before on the Model Y, and when you're on a long ride and the car keeps alerting you that there's something behind you, it's a little annoying. So now you can turn that off. The truck will stop alerting you that something's behind you when you have an accessory back there. The driver plus settings being persistent just means that however you set up the adaptive cruise control or the highway assist, which is your self-driving, it will remember that for the next trip, whereas without this, you would have to reset that with each trip. So now let's get down to some additional improvements. So those were actually new features. Now let's get down to some additional improvements, and some of these are actually a big deal for me. So the infotainment system is more stable, although I never had any problems. This second one is just that they've added some, some better graphics to the menus. The third one is they've simplified the media panel behavior so that you can have an easier time liking your songs. That's pretty simple when you're over here. They've just made some of this like fun functionality of like the Spotify uh, work a little bit better. Uh, what else we got here? All right, Alexa can now be canceled mid-command. Alexa, play Foo Fighters. Alexa, stop. That just means that she will... <laughs> pay better attention to stopping what you accidentally just started to say. All right, they have improvements to various screens and animations throughout the menu. All right. They fixed some rare issues with navigation. Never had any problems there. Uh, infotainment screen resets. Never had that as a problem. FM radio stability. I never had that problem. Uh, Alexa interconnect, internet connectivity. Alexa, stop. I never had that problem. Wi-Fi hotspot availability. Never had that. Uh, obviously making improvements to all these little areas here. Uh, this is a really big one. I'm going to stop here. Addressed an occasional issue with the driver's side gear tunnel door not opening upon first request for gear tunnel release button on the bed rail. That's a big deal for me. That actually was a problem that I had, and I covered that in my uh, gear tunnel tour video. Go check that out. Basically, the, the button was not always responsive. So let me go show that to you real quick. All right, so this was an intermittent problem, not all the time, but I would approach the vehicle, it would unlock, I would press the button to open this gear tunnel here, the button's up top, and it wouldn't respond. Sometimes I'd have to push it three, four times, and there's just enough delay of a delay to make it annoying. Now look here, I press the button and it opened instantly. Let's do that one more time, like without a single second of delay, boom, instantly unlatches. So that's great. That delay, even though it was every once in a while, was, was bothering me, so that problem's gone. All right, passenger side comfort settings now synchronized to driver settings when a passenger is not present. That means that when you're in climate and your passenger has disconnected the sink because they want their own temperature, 
Uh, that's great. It allows you guys to both do what you need to do separately. But then later on, when you're driving by yourself, it automatically turns that off. It just goes with your temperature. So it's pretty nice that it automatically does that for you. Okay, the next few around the fan cooling noise, uh, either coming off of a charge or when you um, uh, first leave uh, the vehicle or enter the vehicle. That actually is a s small thing that I appreciate. The, the cooling fan is kind of loud outside at times. I have had somebody ask, why is your fan so loud? So they've, they've made it a little bit uh, quieter at times. Um, some issues with the speed posting changing from kilometers to miles per hour. I've never had that. Uh, park assist warnings and drive will now trigger earlier obstacle in the front. So as you approach something, they, they've increased the distance that will start to alert you in the front. Uh, this other one here, improved highway assist lane centering. I may have felt that a little bit on my road trip to Pismo, which is a video you can go check out. I thought it did a pretty good job of keeping me in the, in the middle of my lane, although there were moments where I thought it was slightly moving back and forth ever so subtly. My passengers never noticed it. I might have noticed it. They're just doing a better job of keeping me in the center lane now. Uh, this other one here, I actually had this problem, this last one. Fix an occasional issue where the adaptive cruise control was not available after highway assist disengaged. This happened, again, in my video road trip to Pismo. Uh, it mistakenly thought my hands were off the wheel. It kicked me off highway assist, highway assist, gave me a timeout for the rest of the trip, and I was not also able to use adaptive cruise control, which should not have been the issue. So they fixed that. By the way, um, all I had to do was pull over the highway, uh, stop the vehicle, turn it back on, and they took me out of timeout. But it's good that they disconnected those two as far as um, them being uh, both part of the same quote-unquote timeout. And I think that's it. I mean, the, there's a couple of um, improvements here. I mean, mainly the one that I really appreciate is the uh, the fix on the driver's side gear tunnel door opening more quickly. Um, I really do like the new feature of the cabin preconditioning temperature adjustment that I can do a temperature adjustments from my app. And that's it. Those are all the new features of the update 2022.35.3. Now, I am going to make one more comment. I almost feel like Rivian's listening to me. Um, in my video road trip to Pismo, I did call out that the areas of improvement were to fix the adaptive cruise control going into timeout. And on my gear tunnel tour video, I did call out that they really needed to do a better job of having the gear tunnel door opening more um, dependably. And they both were issues addressed in this release. I wonder, is Rivian listening to my videos? I'm just going to tell myself that they are, but I think that's pretty cool. Now, let me go ahead and give you all the pages of the release notes. There is three of them. Uh, just go ahead and pause the screen and take your screenshots. So that's it. I told you it'd be short and sweet. And I want to hurry and get this video out since the features are only 24 hours old. Now I get to draw my attention to the other videos I'm shooting. Tomorrow I have a Rivian mobile technician coming by to do a couple of small tweaks uh, service visit for my R1T truck. So I'm going to see if I can capture that. And then next week I have the same thing for a Tesla Model Y. I have a Tesla mobile technician coming by for a visit. I'll capture that as well. And then I need to draw my attention to, to the tonneau cover. Not just because I've been promising to do it, but I think my Rivian key card got sucked into the tonneau cover last week when I was in Pismo. So I have to shoot that video next, take apart the cover, hopefully I can do that, and maybe I'll even find my key card in the process. And then I'm going to turn my attention to solar panels and the house battery. I know a lot of you have been leaving comments asking me to cover that, and I really want to do that. So I will draw my attention to the solar side of my EV life stories in the next month. So those are all reasons why I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. You can follow along with all my EV Life stories because you'll be notified when I have new videos out. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button as well. So that's it for today. I want to thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next video and you have yourself a great EV day.